Welcome back all, Laura here. All right, so we are going to get a move on and we are at our Gerudo Canyon stable. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get on our cellar horse. So this is the horse we've had for a while, the one we don't care about. And we are gonna ride it back out of here toward the east. So let's go ahead and let the uh, horse find the roadway here. And you can see just how much slower this horse is as compared to the five-star speedster we've been riding around on. Painfully slow this boy is. There's lots to do in this segment. Treasure, Karoxides, etc. Speaking of which... Nice little payday. Now we got a little climbing. You know, I'm gonna not be lazy here and change clothes. Just because uh, we've got some climbing to do coming up. All right, so I'm right in the crack or split of this, uh, I don't know what you want to call this, this rock formation or this stone land bridge, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and there's actually two crock seeds associated with one of these, and I think it's the next one. Yeah, it's the next one. All right, so continue on mission, continue on path. And we'll be coming to another one of those tunnel things with a split in it. This is the one that'll have two Karak seeds. This one is one of those glistening, swirling pile of leaves right in the middle. And the other one will be a pedestal with a croc seed we gotta puncture, or activate I should say. Just to kind of give you a rough estimate where we are on the map here. And continue, continuing on route. Ah, oh, these stupid rocks. Speaking of rocks, do you take the time to stop and pick up all the rocks in the area? I have, in one of my walkthroughs, found a gold ruby. And of course, I'm not having any luck today, but yeah, just check all the rocks on this uh, roadway here. Okay, when you start to see lanterns, we're close. You know, this is bothering me. I, I just really want to know a uh, cricket. Wow. Okay, well, so much for that. Wow. Okay, so uh, I guess I take back what I said about these rocks being lucrative. I mean, some of, some of the stuff is randomized, so uh, it might be worth a look just to see. Okay, so when you get to this little flat part that the horse is going to kind of ride out and around, this is where that guy is that I pointed out on the way out here. Go ahead and talk to him and he's going to want to buy your horse. 
And that's a gold rupee, baby. Uh, Whoops. Uh, I got in a hurry and I forgot to say I'll sell it. <laughs> and there's your gold rupee. No big deal, we really didn't want that horse anyway. I never ride it, don't need it. All right, so from here, you got some gemstones and uh, no, it looks like a free sun shroom there. You got some bundles of wood here as well, or a bundle of wood. Yep. And I guess sometimes they're better than others for the quality of gemstones you're gonna get there. Okay, so from right here, right where we sold the horse, in fact, I should probably mark that somehow. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and climb. We got a croc seat up above. Okay, so rough estimate where we are on the map here. Now this is where that other side quest is going to begin. The, uh, I don't know what it's called, the search for Sesame's friends, or missing in action, I think is what it's called. So yeah, right here. And it's best to be in full stealth here so that you can do some sneak striking. Well, that is assuming you can uh, get around here. So as you approach enemies, walk, don't run. You should be able to sneak strike. And the guy next to him didn't even notice. His partner getting bushwhacked from behind. Kind of funny. Okay, so here's friend number one. Now, I don't really know how to mark these on the map. I guess I'll use shields this time. Ah, what am I doing? Another thing I like about the stealth suit that I bought from Kakariko Village is that nighttime speed up. You're gonna get spoiled uh, being able to run around so fast. You're always gonna want it to be nighttime. Okay, so you saw the gemstones across the way, I'm sure, but we got some more sneak strike in here. Now, do be aware of bomb barrels this time. Matter of fact, uh, I really don't. <laughs> Really don't want to accidentally blow myself up. All right, we're gonna fly across the way for some quick gemstoneage. Now I say usually, and then nothing good happens. But usually, these are gonna be good. So I will go ahead and bust them apart with a weapon, and that time they were pretty good. Okay, climb up from here. I'm going to take a quick detour from the friend finding for the moment. We're going to activate a quick shrine pedestal. This is fun. Uh, you're going to take some heart damage here. So do be aware of that. If you've got an extra heart meal working for you, that's probably a good thing. Now you can consume a uh, heat elixir here if you want, but to be honest, it's only going to be a few hearts. It's really not that big of a deal. I don't know if the lobster shirt will cover you, but I think as soon as you change clothes, they'll get pissed off and kick you out and you'll have to start all over, so I'll just go ahead and eat the hearts. It's no big deal.
Okay, this next one, the hearts are going to disappear rather quickly. So make sure you have nothing wooden equipped. Uh, you're going to want a metal bow, metal shield, uh, metal weapon, all that fun stuff. And the hearts are going to go fast, folks. So keep an eye on your heart gauge there. I think this one costs between 20 and 25 and all. Can't really remember. It's a lot. Kind of funny that the Gorons aren't doing it with you. Okay, when I'm down to about a heart and a half or so, that's when I'll go ahead and uh, start consuming my... Just so that I stay topped off. Whoops. There you have it. You do have a couple of uh, swift violets in the area as well. Alright, so I'm just going to activate that travel gate for now. AKA warp portal. And we're going to head back out toward the... Uh, scaffoldings here. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and consume an extra heart meal. I cooked them for a reason, right? Okay, and I think this is where we found those gemstones. Yep, sure is. So now we're back on track for the most part. So here we go. Some more bad guys. And I'm all about ease. I missed the headshots. Shame on me. And friend number two. Okay, so continuing on the scaffolding here, we should be coming to some more treasure chests. So as long as you get the headshots, they'll actually go down in one arrow. I like how Link explains the situation, his body language. I think it's pretty funny how they got that. Alright. Friend number three. And the fourth one, a little tricky. It's way the heck up there on top of that thingamajiggy. Uh, watchtower overhang thingy is what I'll call that. Uh, but before I get up there, we need to probably change clothing again. I'm actually going to go up. Sideways here, there's another area of note. 
the obvious swift violet. So right about here there should be a resting place. Oh nuts. There I had a stamina. Luminous stones and a treasure chest. For you picture takers out there, go ahead and grab your snapshot of your Gerudo shield there. Yeah. So I like to keep uh, three metal and three wooden on hand, or non-metal, which that guardian, uh, the guardian shield counts as non-metal, or uh, non-flammable, I should say, and non-lightning attracting. I forgot to mark that treasure chest. four. Now, as soon as you get the fourth friend, it should update missing an action. And uh, let's go ahead and mark the map. There's the friend. And of course, we got another treasure chest. So what I'm going to do now is mark the tower or pin the tower. Reason being is because it makes perfect sense to make our ascension toward the tower, get the map, see what we're doing from right here at this very spot. And don't worry about the missing in action side quest. All you gotta do is warp back to the uh, stable shrine, talk to Sesame, and it'll be like, oh, thank you for rescuing my friends, blah, blah, blah. And that'll be that. You'll get your gold rupee payday. Okay, so the reason I like to come up this way, bad boy nest, treasure, weapons, this is a nice little hunting ground for weaponage. Now do be aware these lizzles are quite a challenge. They are mean. And there's some bomb barrels there and some good weaponry. So what I recommend is using those bomb barrels to your advantage since they're all holding metal weapon stuff. Go ahead and light them on fire, let them explode. And that does a little damage so you can kind of get in there and uh, finish them off a little easier. Yeah. Ow, that hurt. He's got a uh, tri boomerang. Which is equivalent to a royal broadsword. So, yeah, that hurt. That took a lot of hurts. That's why I said these guys are no joke. Don't forget your monster parts. And I think I'm going to tech refresh something here. Just in case I've had some use on that, I'll go ahead and tech refresh. Alright, so moving on uphill toward that pin we placed. You've got your cold darners and winter wing butterflies up around this area too, so you might want to walk, don't run, so that you don't scare all of them off. Now we're going to head a little over toward the left this time. 
more directly toward the pin we placed. Maybe even a little left of that. We got a car seed here at this lonely, lonely tree all by itself out here in the middle of nowhere. Be, do be aware there's a dancing idiot out there with a fire weapon. You don't want him coming after you, so try to sneak in and sneak out. Okay, now back on track toward our uphill motion. We got another little area of interest. I say little, there's actually quite a lot here. That was a husk that was hanging down, by the way. Now this is kind of tight quarters for stamping, so I'll just kind of put a little treasure chest out to the side of that. Uh, yellow rune will help you to see the enemies. There's going to be two uh, electric lizzles, and they hurt a lot. And do not be in the water, folks. If you're in the water, they're going to hurt a lot more. So what I recommend is ice arrows. Put them on ice. Finish them off. Attack power boost might not hurt here. Ah, oh, come on. That's actually a pretty good bow. It's equivalent to a royal bow, and since mine's about to break, I might as well tech refresh. Now, if you're low on fairies, you should see a fairy uh, freely flying around here. Uh, down to one or two or zero fairies. Uh, you might find some hardy lizards. The blue lizards. I think I got another wolf. Or two. Did I get my free monster part? Can't remember. Yes. Okay, we got a Karak seed here. Now this one you're going to want a two-handed weapon and stasis. You don't push this one in, it just won't roll for you the right way. One hit with a two-hander should get it right in. Okay, keep that yellow rune at the ready. Uh, pick up all the rocks in the area, too. You're going to get some good rocks out here. Uh, but first things first, let's take care of this lizzle that's standing around out here. And remember what I said, don't go in the water. That's just going to be a bad deal. Alright. Got another boomerang. Eh. Can't remember if I've been using on that or not. Just to play it safe, I will tech refresh. Alright, folks. Don't forget your rock. There's another rock with a... Uh, a darner under it, and I don't know. I must have passed it. Ancient screw. It's an electric darner, and it's a new breed of uh, insect we have not yet come across. Actually, this might be it right here. No. Maybe here. There you go. So make sure you're spamming that A button when you go to pick up a rock. And the electric darner, we're going to need one of all three types of darners for a side quest in uh, Akela, which we haven't been to yet. But it's called Little Sister's Bug Request or something like that. 
and she wants to see all three types of darners. So you got your cold darner, your electric darner, and your warm darner. So that's why I recommend just keeping one of each. Do not go below that in your inventory. Okay, so continuing our uphill motion here. We're going to be coming to another bad boy nest. Now, these are going to be electric chews. Go ahead and shoot them all with bow and arrow. And it's going to electrify all the bad guys in the area. And you're going to want to run back through and pick up this yellow chew jelly. Because when you start fighting these guys, unfortunately, uh, if they hit the chew jelly, it's going to shock you instead. So uh, do be aware of that. Now, I recommend taking care of these guys just because uh, they do give you... Oops. They do give you, um... Moblin guts. Which I think I mentioned earlier on you are gonna need for suit upgrades. Nine of them, to be exact. Where are my guts? There you go. Alright, so heading up more toward our pin. We're almost there, folks. Almost at our tower here. I know this is a rather long video segment, but, you know, we got a lot done, so... Hoorah. Alright, so when you get here, uh, feel free to bomb blast this little domino looking thing over. Now do be aware you're going to have a strong uh, wind, so don't open your chute here just yet. What, we're, what I'm going to do is kind of take advantage of this domino looking thing, walk out here, and we're going to use Navali's Gale. And that's going to kind of cheat a little bit and bypass that strong headwind. No matter what direction you try to approach this tower from, you're going to be dealing with that strong headwind. So, uh, Navali's Gale really is the way to go to get up here as easy as possible. And congratulations, you have now made it to Gerudo Tower. Or Wasteland Tower, I can't remember what this one's called, but... Either way, when we come back, there's lots to do in the area.